Hello children, I'm going to read to you The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Now, it's a very small book and I should be able to show you the photos as I go. It's one of my favourite books as a child and I loved the film. Once upon a time there were four little rabbits. Their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. And they lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. You should be able to see them just there. Now, my dear, said old Mrs Rabbit one morning, go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs McGregor. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I'm going out. There she is, putting Peter's coat on for him. Then old Mrs Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. <coughs> Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. And there they are, gathering blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, rang straight away to Mr McGregor's garden and he squeezed under the gate. There he is. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans. Then he ate some radishes. And then feeling rather sick he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame who should he meet but Mr McGregor. Mr McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten his way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately got caught in a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons and was quite new. Look there. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr McGregor came up with a sieve which he intended to pop down on top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. He rushed into the tool shed and jumped into the can. Into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had quite so much water in it. There it is, look, the watering can. Mr McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Presently, Peter sneezed. <coughs> Mr McGregor was after him in no time. He tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. There's Peter upsetting all the plants. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp, sitting in that can. After a while, he began to wonder about going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around him. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, 
carrying peas and beans to her family. Peter asked her way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth, she couldn't answer. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way across, straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently he came to a pond where Mr McGregor filled his watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish, and she sat very, very still. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. Look, see the cat looking at the goldfish. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr McGregor hoeing his onions. His back was turned towards Peter and beyond him was the gate. There we go, look. You see Mr McGregor in the background. Peter got down from very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some blackcurrant bushes. Mr Greg McGregor caught sight of him, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. There's Peter's jacket. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him till he got to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down on the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he'd done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. That your mums and dads would be cross if you lost your shoes and jackets, wouldn't they? I am very sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. And I know that lots of the other teachers have read your stories too. And I hope you're enjoying this story time. Stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. <laughs>